Matt Kaiser. Present. Keith Perkins. Here. Richard Brooks. Here. Brad Fredette. Present. Ken Hilton. Here. Anthony Jones. Here. Okay. First order of business uh, will be a, appoint Mr. Jones as a voting member. Uh, Actually, uh, Mr. Chair, I, I think um, Mr. Mr. Hilton here would rather vote. Very well. Mr. Hilton will be the uh, voting member then. And on that note, I guess I'd like to be excused if there's no conflicts of interest among the board. Very well. Okay. All right. Good. First order of business, approval of the minutes of the meeting of October 4, 2023. What would the board wish to do? Mr. Fredette. Make a motion to approve the minutes as presented. Second by, second by Mr. Perkins. Any discussion? All those in favor of approving minutes, raise your right hand. 5 0. The motion is approved. The minutes are approved. Old business. Any old business that may come before the board? Ms. Crosley, any old business? No old business. Any old business from board members? Okay. See you now. We'll move on to new business. Item 3 Alpha. Kurt Stallsmith is seeking a variance from Table 5A1 to allow the expansion of a front porch to be located within the 15 foot side setback on a property located at 15 Maple Street in Historic Moderate Density District, Assessor's Map 11, Lot 131, ZBA Case 15 2023, HDC Case 30 2023. There is a public hearing. I'll open the public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Um, as indicated, the applicant is seeking to expand an existing porch um, from a five foot wide porch to a 10 foot wide porch to be three feet into the 15 foot setback, making the structure 12 feet from the property line. This applicant did receive historic district approval for the proposed expansion of the porch, which they reviewed obviously the aesthetics of the porch. Your purview here is the encroachment into the setback where they're looking for a variance for that. Um, there are no prior zoning board or site plan applications found related to this property and as mentioned they did receive the certificate of appropriateness from the historic district. One of the conditions of that application was that they needed a variance to do it as proposed. Um, they have addressed all five of the variance criteria and the board has jurisdiction over variances and can move forward on this application. Okay, thank you. Any questions for Ms. Crosley? Be done. Will the applicant please come forward? Explain to the board why we should why the why the variant should be approved. Hello, I'm Kurt Stallsmith. I am the property owner. Um, I'm looking to expand the porch due to its current functionality at its current dimensions. Um, it can't really be used for too much. I'd like to be able to expand it so that I would have more use for that front yard space and uh, be kind of more involved within my neighborhood. Um, so that's why I'm looking to kind of expand the porch from its current dimensions. Okay, could you please just go through the criteria so we can get that into the minutes? Sure. You want me to just read from my application? You can read from your application. You can expand upon it. You do as you wish. Sure. Uh, facts supporting this current request. Um, current structure already has a portion that comes within 12 feet of the side yard at the back portion of the house. Um, so I would be kind of keeping it within the current uh, footprint of the house. Um, it would, uh, would increase appeal and functionality of porch. Uh, granting the variance would not be contrary to public interest as variance would not create a clustered appearance due to the adjacent property having substantial amount of space um, from property line to other structure. Um, explain how literal enforcement of the provisions of the ordinance would result in an unnecessary hardship owing to special conditions of the property that distinguish it from other properties in the area. Uh, functionality of current porch is limited due to restricted size. Proposed use is a reasonable one because only expanded porch with an established uh, footprint of house. Explain how granting the variance would be substantial justice, increased property values for surrounding properties. Explain how the proposal is not contrary to the spirit of the ordinance due to large amount of space between surrounding structures would not clutter the appearance of neighborhood. Okay. Anything else to add? I have no further to add on my own. Okay, so what we'll do here is we'll just have you step aside, see if there's any abutters that want to speak either for or against, and then have you back, come back up uh, and answer questions from the board. Probably won't have any abutters, but we will at least have to ask. Sounds good. 
Any butters who would like to come up to speak either for or against the uh, applicant? Nope, don't sit down. I'm telling you, it's going to be much. Sorry, I was going to have you sit. So I just step aside. Come on back up. Questions from the board? I have a question for you. Okay, so the existing structure ha in the back of the structure has a, a, an item that sticks out. Is that into the right into the uh, setback? Yes, it is. It's uh, to the exact same within 13 feet of the other uh, property line. So that's within 13 feet of the property line. Mm -hmm. The existing porch is how wide? Uh, existing porch is about five feet wide. And you want to make the new one about ten. About ten, which would the intent is to line up with the existing back structure. portion. Correct. Okay. Further questions, Mr. Fredette. Yeah. So criteria three always seems to be the hang up for this board. What is the hardship? specific to this property that distinguishes it from other properties in the area that would make granting this variance reasonable? So if I, I'll put that in, in more layman's term because it's, it's usually said. So what, what, it's, what it's saying is what's different about this property such that the zoning as it applies to this property is unfair? So how is it that this property shouldn't have to meet the zoning? That's kind of what the question is. That's, and that's the, the words they're using. Okay. So that's what he's asking. Um, the current side uh, yard next to the house is kind of useless for any use, honestly. Um, there is a lot of shade over it. Not much plant life can grow on it. I can't really get a lawn. Its overall appearance is just unappealing based on the usefulness of that yard. So expanding the porch will hopefully get rid of that portion of grass that's unable to grow and really be useful for anything curb appeal wise. What is the total what is the total encroachment that you will be into the 15 foot setback? Uh, it should come about two feet into the encroachment. Thank you. Other questions for the applicant? Any other questions? Uh, Mr. Hilton. The, maybe I'm thick or something, but um, the width of your, it's the depth of your porch is only five feet deep. How wide is it? Sorry, it's width. Uh, mm, that's a good question, obviously, off the top of my head. I don't think I have the exact measurement of the exact length of it along the side of the house. I would imagine it's probably about 20 feet lengthwise, I think. But that I, that's an estimate. I have no real idea off the top of my head. Okay. Right. This is a wraparound porch, right? This Correct. It's on the front, and we're talking is the wraparound, the porch on the side. So you're saying it goes 20 feet back from the front of the house to where that addition is? If I was going to, yeah, if I was going to guess, that would that would be my estimate on its uh, length. And then the across the front of the house, it will go from side to side of the house? From um, it goes from about midway uh, on the front of the house and then wraps around from there. So it's about halfway um, within the front facade of the house. Okay. And what you're proposing is that it, it will go out 10, it's five feet now, mm -hmm. it will go... 10 feet out and then on the side of the house it will be 10 feet also the front portion will not go any further than the current five feet that it is um, extended i don't plan on coming much closer to the street i just want it on the side portion to be expanded out into my yard essentially okay okay thank you mm -hmm. mr hilton might help you on, on the second thing of the, the staff member they have a picture of the house yeah, i didn't see that i'm sure if you saw that Right there. Uh -huh. the, the bottom picture kind of gives you a good visual of what it looks like. Mr. Brooks. So I guess my question is explain how the grant and granting the variance would not be contrary to the public interest. Obviously the setbacks are put in for numerous reasons. I mean I've kind of read up on these because we've had a lot of people ask about setbacks and you know, I guess the best way I can sum it up is they, they're intended to keep a buffer between buildings 
safety wise you know keep prevents the spread of fire uh allows access to the rear of the building should emergency services need to come through so on and so forth like that um as well as aesthetics i mean there's lots of reasons when you delve into this for why it is and obviously different towns different zones have different setbacks so i I guess it's kind of two parts because it's both the hardship and contrary to the public interest because obviously everybody around there would have to have the 15 feet setback so what makes yours special but at the same time not contrary to the public interest of having these setbacks um i don't think it would i understand the fairness of the situation for everybody else who then doesn't a lot of variance on their property for like a 15 within the 15 feet um i think again i guess my kind of overall hang up with the porch is just making it functional um it being as it is there's no real use for it um so i would hope overall that the expansion of it would allow more presence of whoever's residing in the property to be more present in the neighborhood necessarily um being out on the porch utilizing it um i guess somewhat i'm a little hung up on the hardship part of it as well because it's not exactly a hardship that my porch can't get larger um so i don't know if i have a great answer to that question honestly like Mr. Fredette said, it's commonly the hardest thing to prove. And, you know, obviously, if it's an odd shaped property, that's usually something to play into it. You know, looking at this, it's pretty standard properties around there. So, just my thoughts on that, I guess. Other questions for the applicant? Final comments by the applicant? Uh, no further comments by my. Okay, thank you very much. With that, I'm going to close the public hearing, open up for board discussion. Mr. Fredat. I will say that for me and my time on this board, there are times that I really think I want to grant a variance. And Can I call, ask you to pause just a moment? Because my error. We need to discuss regional impact. Oh, sorry. Regional impact. I'm sorry. <laughs> we always, nope, we always. I always say, Mr. Brooks. I'll make a motion. I move that the variance request for Kurt Stallsmith does not have potential for regional impact. We have a motion. We have a second by Mr. Perkins. Uh, any discussion on regional impact? All those in favor of the motion which says it does not have regional impact, raise your right hand. Passes 5 0. Mr. Fredat, you can continue. Sorry. My time on this board, there are. Sometimes I can think of that I really think, you know, my gut tells me this is reasonable. I think it's practical. It's something I like to do, yet I would like to do, and I just, I can't see the hardship. And that is, Mr. Brooks pointed to it, that oftentimes we look, this board, some of us, most of us have been sitting here for a while together now. I think together as a board, we often look at the shape of the property size of the property frontage there's nothing substantially unique about the shape or size of this property the location of the building on the property not unlike many others in the area i just i think and then i think i have to look at from my perspective what is the ask and i think here it is a porch but it is a porch in part because it's a historic building and a covered porch and i think the risk here for me, while I do think about every case on its own merits, this is in some form a deck. And I think we run the risk as a board, or let me put it this way, as a board member making a decision, I am very mindful of the fact that we have to think about how, I have to think about how a decision I make may impact future decisions. And I just think allowing somebody to expand a porch into a setback without a very very which a porch we call a structure in the city which it reasonably is i think the bar for me to allow a structure and a setback has to be higher than this unfortunately okay. 
Mr. Hilton. This is, uh, this is one of those things uh, that continues to come up all the time that we keep. Um, to me, the hardship is having to come before this board. <laughs> That's because it's just, you know, if, if he had built that porch and not said anything, no one would know anything. But he's coming before us trying to do what's right, trying to obey the law, asking for a variance. That's a hardship already right there. And, you know, it just, it's hard to fathom. One of the candidates in the city, on city, going for city council is that we have become the city of no. And I'm telling you, you know, when honest people come before the board and try and ask for something and we keep saying no to them, then we need to change these, ver we need to change these rules and make it easier for folks to obey the law because they're trying. Okay, so I, I would vote for the variance because he's trying to do the right thing. Okay. Yep. Further comments by board members. All right. I'll, this, this, uh, and looking at the criteria, I don't think the the, the application would uh, diminish surrounding property values. I don't think it, it's really like he, like you said. The other structure is quite a distance away from it, so I don't think it really infringes upon the other structure. Though I also, on the, the hindsight, other side of it don't believe that you can use other people's property as your buffer. Uh, the variance is not contrary to public interest. There is no negative really to the public besides the, maybe, maybe some access. It does substantial justice. It gets the, gets the applicant a usable porch. He has a, you know, five feet is probably a small porch. It's probably hard to do. It gets a more functional porch. Uh, the spirit of the ordinance it really adding would, would adding that porch change the characteristics of the neighborhood? Probably not, um, because it, because probably because the neighbor the neighboring property is so far away. But if you start putting things together, and if the other neighbor if the neighbor built, then your things become tight. We get to the hardship criteria. To be clear on the hardship criteria, it's not that the person has a hardship. It's that the zoning ordinance as applied to that property unnecessarily creates a hardship, i.e., what is special about that property that the zoning ordinance doesn't seem to apply the right way. Uh, a common one would be a pie-shaped property where the frontage requirement isn't met, but the property can be, but the building can be put back and still have plenty of space. That would be a common example of how, in this case, the applicant unfortunately couldn't demonstrate that the property has any unique characteristics that unfairly apply the ordinance to it. So unfortunately, in my mind, we can't grant the ordinance. We can't grant the, uh, the variance, in my opinion. Mr. Brooks. Yeah, I, I certainly understand where Mr. Hilton's coming from on, you know, zoning in general is a hardship to everybody. I mean, once you start placing setbacks, you're taking a section of everybody's property that's no longer able to be used, essentially. You know, of course, they can use it for a driveway, a walkway, just not a structure. So, you know, we, we don't set these things. These were set in our zoning ordinance years ago. Maybe they're outdated. Maybe they should be changed. But that's not our decision. We have to base this on the criteria that we have to meet based on state law. And, again, I, I don't see the hardship. Um, the public interest, you know, kind of wishy-washy on that one. I could go either way, but... You know, obviously, when they set these zoning ordinances, whatever reason they had for it, they decided 15 feet, and 15 feet's pretty standard. I mean, some places have larger, some places have smaller, but most of them seem to be a standard 15 feet, or at least a large majority in this city. Um, so, again, I just I don't see the hardship coming into it. You know, he, he is able to enlarge it out to the setback. He probably gain three feet, I'm guessing, by my math, so end up with an eight-foot-wide porch. You know, maybe that's enough for him, maybe it's not. But it would certainly be allowed without a variance. Um, 
but again, I just I don't see the hardship being met here. Okay. Mr. Furnett. And and I'd like to piggyback off of and agree with what Mr. Brooks said, but also I mean I think we have to think about a fifteen foot setback in a quarter acre lot. I mean there are a lot of lots in Summersworth that are this size or even a little smaller in neighborhoods. And again, I, I everybody has a different opinion, but I think everybody's opinion of what is reasonable for a setback is also different when it's their property or somebody else's. And to that point, I think, as Mr. Brooks said, I think 15 feet is not uncommon, nor is it unreasonable. Okay. Further comment on the application? Mr. Hilton. If he wanted to put up uh, just a, a junky plastic storage shed right on the neighbor's yard, he could do that with no with nothing and he could mess up all kinds of stuff in the neighborhood and that's okay but if someone wants to make their property better we're gonna stop them I just think that that's if he's coming before the board trying to do something on the up and up that's he spent his time he's done that's a hardship in my opinion so that's it may be a hardship, but it's not a hardship for the criteria of the zoning ordinance. So it's, it's just the difference. Mr. Fernandez. Many years ago when I came to this board, Shanna Saunders was the planner in town. And I said, you know, Shanna, I'd like to help out. And she said, well, are you more a strict to the rules kind of guy? Or are you more of a thinking outside of the box kind of guy? And I said, you know, I'm kind of a follow the rules kind of guy. And she said, you know, if you're between, if you're a out of the box kind of guy, I'd push you towards the planning board. If you're a follow the rules kind of guy, I'd stick you on the zoning board because you will generally, you will be asked to apply the five criteria to each and every case. And that I think is our job as a zoning board is to look at it strictly through those five criteria and accept those criteria as what they are, which is the ordinances in this city. Okay. So rather than debate too much what the ZBA purpose is, but that's fine. It's good. It's good discussion. We're, we're, we're just trying to keep it to the applicants because the applicants waiting to hear. Any further comment or discussion on this application? If not, the chair would entertain a motion. Mr. Brooks. After, re yeah. After review of the application, the file, and all the information presented to the board, I feel that the hardship criteria of the five criteria have not been satisfied, and I move that the request for Kurt Stallsmith for a variance from Table 5.A.1 to allow the expansion of a front porch to be located within the 15-foot side setback on a property located at 15 Maple Street be denied. Motion to move a second. Second by Mr. Perkins. Discussion on the motion. Oh, the mo okay, the motion is to deny the variance. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Opposed? Motion ca carries four to one. The variance is denied. All right. Item three, Bravo on the agenda. Drew Serbin of Burr Signs on behalf of Forget Management LLC is seeking a variance from section 19.20. And this is the is this the one? It should be 19.20, Charlie. Three Bravo, right? 19.20.3. Point, point Charlie, point three Bravo. And 19.20.D4 to allow three directional signs greater than four square feet and 277.35 square feet of wall and freestanding signs on a property located at 285 Route 108 in the Commercial Industrial District, Assessor's Map 47, Lot 8, ZBA Case 16-2023. I'll open the public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Yep. So the applicant is seeking to install 277.35 square feet of a mixture of wall and freestanding signage, and um, in addition, 
uh, three directional signs that are greater than four square feet. Directional signs are typically exempt from the calculations, but they are required to be four square feet. So they are seeking a variance to have allow those to be larger than. Um, we did give you information regarding um, they had submitted a sign permit, um, how we calculated what their base allowance was, um, their total signage allowance based off of the um, ordinance was 146.80 square feet. Um, they had received a variance in 2003. Um, this was to allow for more than one freestanding sign um, where only one is permitted and a freestanding sign that was greater than 16 feet. Um, and that sign permit was approved. They have addressed all five of the criteria for the variance application and it is ready for your review. Okay, so just for clarity, so the second thing signed says that the install a 220 square foot sign. So what are they, so bottom of page one, your, your memo. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm a little confused on the total silage allowance is 140 square feet. Is there existing signage 220 square feet? Based off of the documents that were um, associated with their prior applications and that they provided for their sign permit that they were doing, um, indicating what the existing signage was, it calculated out to 220 square feet. Um, the variance did, there was discussion from the 2003 variance whether or not it was required. At the time, staff um, did not feel that a variance was required and did approve the permit based off of signage of that square footage. Okay. But at the time, at this time, their request is to allow for the 277 square feet. And a copy of what they are looking to install has been provided with the application. Right. Okay. Other questions for Ms. Crosley? All right, seeing none, will the applicant please come forward? State your name and tell us why we should grant the variance. Brendan Forget, one of the owners there. Um, after looking at the variance we asked for, we have gotten with Nissan as far as what we can cut out. Okay, this is a financial commitment we've made with them for the signs. Based on the 220 that we already have, we are looking to, we have seven signs currently to chop that down to three. So on the, what's that diagram? We talked to Nissan about getting rid of B, G, E, and F. Hold on. Page, are they on one of our, go ahead, go again. Page four. Yep, page four. Yep, so it'd be B, G, E, and F, which every sign I take down is a loss in revenue from Nissan, but they wanted us to get rid of Summersworth, which obviously been here for 25 years, not an option. So our variance now would be 215 compared to the 144 we're allowed. Keeping just the pylon, Summersworth on the building, and the tablet sign to go over the entryway. <clears throat> it's quite intimidating here. <laughs> Usually I'm on that side. All right. So you're eliminated B, E, G, and E. B, E, and G, right? Did I get that right? No, B, E, F and G. F and G, okay. But you know, getting rid of Nissan, but the other signage has it on it, so. Your, for clarification, E is an in, was indicated as an interior sign? Oh, well, sorry, whatever the two reader boards that are over the size. F and F. F? You talk about F? You talk about the one that says service, X, and yep. express? Yep. So you're eliminating those? Just getting rid of those. So you're getting rid of F. Because obviously we applied for it, and I understand rules have changed, so we want to keep the stuff that's important. So... To be clear, so your variance, and Ms. Crosley will help, and we're going to work through this, is so you're no longer asking for a variance for the directional signs because you're not going to put them up. No. And your total squ square footage would be 215 square feet. Point three eight. Excuse me? 0.38, yes. 215.38? Yes, sir. Okay. <laughs> Which would literally cut it down to three signs with just Summersworth, 
the Nissan tablet above the entryway, and then obviously the pylon sign. Okay. Are you clear on that, Ms. Crosley? Yes. So it is just the Summersworth and Nissan, the big red Nissan. Correct. So you're keeping Summersworth. And you're keeping the big red Nissan. Yep. Okay. And replacing the pylon sign. Okay. You clear? Yep. Yo, All right. Would actually decrease us by 17 square feet. Right. So now I'm going to ask you to go through the criteria on why you meet the criteria to get a variance. All right. As, a, as far as a hardship, we have to stay competitive. Other dealerships, Dodge being built, we're making a significant investment in the dealership to make sure that it's up to date. Because like many people, you see a McDonald's that's been redone, one that's not, I'm going to the one that's redone. So as far as the signage, there are other dealerships in Portsmouth, Sanford, that, that have this new stuff in Sanford, they already have this. So it puts us at a disadvantage if we're not current on the, the marketing that ties directly to the dealership. Because the signs we have now are the old emblem. These are the new, which correlates to the advertising, new signs that match what they're putting out in commercials. Oops, sorry. That's all right. This is a sign guy. I don't know. I'm not trying to. Just I'm trying to make sure you get your full opportunity. I, I'm at a loss a little bit right now myself. So that's all right. Uh, well, we had, a, had a, gone for more than what we should have. Yeah, that's okay. And well, that's where we wanted to come to say, change, hey. You can change your mind as many times as you want. Well, Thank yeah, because no offense, we're way over what you wanted. And we wanted to cut out the stuff we didn't need. The reader boards, we don't need those. I need the name, Nissan, and the sign telling us who we are. I, I think end of you the day. Your name just, for, just for the record. I'm sorry. Uh, Drew Sermon, president of Burr Signs. We're actually the installer doing the, doing the actual work of the. You had to stay kind of close to the mic, unfortunately. Oh. If you want to talk. Um, I, I think. Uh, he's gone over the hardship a little bit. Um, I think the uh, the fact that the um, that the variance was approved in applied for and approved for considerably more signage than than what is allowed in the code to begin with back in 2003. Um, there were very specific reasons why um, uh, the variance was allowed at that point, and the fact is it's a unique building. It's unique to its to to what it to uh, to its purpose. Um, the property itself, the actual land itself is unique. Um, and so because of that, it needs additional signage on it to be effective. It's not, it, it's not the kind of building that would be appropriate if it didn't have as much as was, was put on it. Um, and the, I know in our application there was, I think, 222 feet of signage, but there was actually 303 feet of signage on that building if you include the, uh, the monument signs, the pylon sign, and all of the building signage that was there. We're not even asking for close to that, um, so that's 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 the uh, the argument that I would make there, and the fact and the fact that the town and this board has already seen fit to put more signage on the building, uh, considerably more than what's been applied for here originally when the building was built. Okay. So I'm going to ask: Is there any abutters? What's just I should just step aside. Any abutters that would like to speak to this? Oh, I do have a gentleman that wants to speak. So if you guys could just step aside. My name is Ethan Clark. I'm a resident of Summersworth. Um, uh, I also am affiliated with Summersworth Nissan. Um, I think uh, may, uh, additional reason as to w what would be helpful with the signage is how the property specifically is set, um, especially on Route 108. We are one of the only properties that is actually set down from Route 108, where many of the buildings are actually at either road level or closer to it. Um, our building specifically especially if it's not winter time or anything like that with the new Goodwin building that was built a few years ago and also with the property that we have maintained to the, r the lot adjacent or next to us um, in the spring summertime it's very hard when people are coming in through 108 and to diminish the signing would make our presence even less known and I, I would be in full support of the signage being granted by this board and would really appreciate it. Anyone else in, would like to speak before I guess? You gentlemen, please come back up. So I'm going to repeat the question just because I'm trying to get it through my brain 
Okay, so the it, it, the property currently has two freestanding signs, right? Correct. Okay, your proposal has one or just two? Just one. Just one. Just yep. the, what you call A. So yep. the other freestanding sign goes away. Going to be removed. Okay, so that that, that, okay, that makes it more clear to me. All right, the we've limited so the, the, on on our picture structure, the C sign, which is a small Summersworth sign on the side, that's going to stay. Correct. Correct. Okay, and important one, right? What's that? Most important one, Summersworth. <laughs> that one. Oh, I make no judgment. Sorry. I don't know. I, <laughs> most important one. Does. <laughs> And then very good to the D sign, which is the Nissan sign on the side the, of the news Nissan stays. Yep. And the Nissan E is, E you said goes away. Yep. Because you, you, you thought that was an interior sign, right? Correct? Or that it doesn't matter, it's going away. You can just put it on the okay. interior. Um, okay. Interior it is. Signs are not calculated. I know, I know. It's not calculated as part of their so wall F, and freestanding F's signs. It's going away, which is the service signs, and G's, yep. the ser word service is going away. Yep. Okay, so do we really have just two signs here, C and D? A, A, C, and D? Yes. That's correct? That's it. Ms. Crosby, you agree with that, that, that assessment? So we're going from seven that we have now to three. Yes, that's how I understand it. The Summersworth sign at 36.18 square feet, Nissan freestanding sign, 68.98 square feet, and the Nissan sign, which is the red um, placard um, one, at 110.22 square feet for a total of the 215.38 square feet. Correct. Okay, just making sure, because we're trying to be... Sorry. Uh, no, that's all right, that's all right. It's a good challenge for us. Yeah. <laughs> You're really Keep on your toes. I just got this today. So. That's right, Mr. Fredak. If they already have 220 square feet of signs and they're going to 215 square feet of signs, do they need a variance? One second. I was going to ask the same thing because <laughs> I, I, I thought understand. it ran with the land. So. Maybe not. Well, maybe, but you may be grandfathered to the 220.91 square feet. Okay, you may be grandfathered, it, and that's you kind of throw us for a loop there. Right about that. So um, the way that it, loss of legal nonconformity um, indicates in the sign ordinance um, in section 20, um, so it says that the nonconforming, let me make sure I'm reading the right part. So the non-conforming sign is removed and replaced with a new sign where the new materials and supports are constructed unless the new sign is dimensionally identical in all aspects to the non-conforming sign. For example, if the non-conforming sign is 8 feet wide by 4 feet tall and 12 inches deep, mounted on 8 foot high, 12, foot, 12 inch by 12 inch support, then the new sign must be the same exact dimensions with no proportion of the sign varying in any dimension from the non-conforming sign. Um, so that's under um, the illegal non-conforming sign shall become illegal sign and must, which must comply. Point, twenty point. C A eight A um, three. Nineteen point, point C. Nineteen twenty C, C eight, eight A, A three. Three. Gotcha. A, my page eighty four. My page eighty nine. So if it was exactly the same size as the prior summer's worth and um, so to be 4.0, we need to grade the variance. Got it. We, they would need a variance. Thank you. Okay. All right. Questions for the applicant. None, huh? All right. Final comments by the applicant. Um, I guess I would just say we, we're proud to be in Summersworth and continue doing business here. We've been here for 25 years and want to be here for another 25. Also want to continue to improve the dealership, be involved in the community, make sure that people when they drive by see a, see a building that we're all proud of. You know, so very important to me and my family that we're putting a product out there for consumers as well as ourselves that is the cutting edge and what, what needs to be there. So, you know, it's I don't think <laughs> about it. We're trying to reduce signs. Yep. Want to make it better for everybody, but also for Summersworth because, you know, 
You guys have been very good to us. All right. Thank you very much. Thank you. Have a seat. I'll close the public hearing. Thank you. Sorry about that. I, we understand that. I try to. Uh, it's we very nerve-wracking up here. I don't know about you guys. Are you still on this side? <laughs> Discussion by the board. Mr. Hilton. It would seem like that if the, that if he's reducing the the size of the signs, and it's been. That, that he should go ahead. I, I would vote in, in favor of this because of it's re reducing the size of the signs and it's also, but it's making it better in the long run. So, and we're, we want businesses in Summersworth to stay. We don't want them going out of business. So. Whoops. Yeah, so I, I don't believe we can get this information to look back at why this was granted in the first place. But like Mr. Hilton said, we are looking at a reduction in what he would had already been approved with. Obviously, you know, we're moving signs up, removing signs, replacing with updated ones. The fact that he's in the same time reducing it, I kind of feel like, you know, we should honor the old variants for whatever reasons it was. I don't think we have access to that readily access and you know whereas he is reducing it i don't see a problem with it obviously it's not been an impact or detrimental over the years of being there as it was so i guess i would be in favor of this one Mr. Burdett. i'm going to come down in, in favor of this one as well um for all the reasons already mentioned i also think the applicant made a point and a valid point that it is a unique property it does sit fairly far off the road it is a automotive dealership. I think literal enforcement of the sign ordinance here would arguably create a safety hazard because you need to kind of see the building as you come up to it. And I think the level of signage that's there now is, is adequate. You have an applicant who's done his diligence to try to stay within it to the point that it's reduced a little bit. I, I think this is reasonable. Mr. Hilton? We didn't do the regional impact. You are correct. We did not do the regional <laughs> impact. Thank you, Mr. Hilton. Would you like to make a motion? Yeah, I'd like to make a motion that this does not affect, would, it would not have regional impact. And it's, we have a motion. We have a second? I'll second. We have a second. The motion is that the signage variance request by Drew Sturban, Sturban of Burr Signs on behalf of Forget Management LLC does not have regional impact. Any discussion? Those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. Motion passes 5 0. Continuing our discussion. Thank you. So, looking at the five criteria. I am a rule follower, you know. What's that, sir? I am a rule follower. <laughs> um, yeah. The signage value, does, does it going to affect surrounding properties? Properties? Is the, the value of. Surrounding properties, no. Variance not contrary to public interest, no. Substantial justice is done, yes. Spirit of the ordinance is observed, does not change the characters of the neighborhood. And, and the uniqueness of the property actually is pretty simple. Is he already has, the uniqueness is he already has an approved variance or approved thing for greater signage. So, and he's not even going to that. So that's, that's, that's why I think not applying this variance would be kind of not do substantial justice, it'd be wrong. Now, we need to modify the approval notion, though. Um, so, you know, I, I'm going to read what it should read. It should read, after review of the application, uh, I'll make the motion, actually. After review of the application, the file, and all information presented to the board, I feel that all five criteria have been satisfied as discussed, and I move that the request of Drew Serb and of Burr Signs on behalf of Forget Management LLC for a variance from Section 19, let's see if we get it right here. Is this, this is, no, I got it wrong. What's the, is it still 1923C Bravo? Uh, no, that is, I apologize about that. Um, it is going to be. 1920 Delta 4. It's the, yeah, it's in the denial motion. I apologize um, for making a mess of that variance. It's That's the 1920D4. 
from section 19.20.4 Delta four for 215.83 square feet. Is that good? Or Can you reference the um, sign specs? What would you like me to reference? Which signs um, are A, B, and A, C, and as D? As described in for yeah. signs A, C, and D. Okay, that's better. In As the Summersworth Nissan sign package dated July 12, 2023. Sure. So signs, if I got A, D, A, C, and D, correct? A, C, and D. As described in the summers were a package of wall and of freestanding wall and freestanding signs on a property located at 285 Route 108 be be, be granted. So what we've done is we've based what my pro, my the motion is to approve the signs as presented. So we have a second, second by Mr. Brooks. Wow, Mr. Perkins. Discussion on the motion. So the motion is to approve signs A, C, and D. Are you all set? Anna. Okay. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Okay. Variance is granted. Moving on to item three, Charlie. Miles Adams is seeking a variance from table 5A5 to allow the construction of a deck to be located within 15 foot side setback on a property located at 118 Indigo Hill Road in a residential slash single family A district. The set was map 03, lot 140, ZBA case 17, 2023. There is a public hearing. Ms. Crosley. Okay. So um, the applicant is. Oh, sorry. Applicants proposing to construct an 8 by 8 addition to an existing deck. Um, this would be within the 15 foot side setback. There are no prior zoning board or site plan applications found related to this property. They have addressed um, the five criteria and the application is um, ready to move forward for the board to review. Okay. Questions for Ms. Crosley. Well, Ms. Crosley, would this be considered a non-conforming structure since it doesn't have the required frontage? Let me review. All right, let's get, we can get back to that. Applicant, can you please come forward? State your name and why we should grant the variance. Hello, everyone. My name is Miles Adams. And based off the criteria so far, I'll just run down the list, explain how the proposal would not diminish the surrounding property values. Uh, it actually would do the opposite. If my home value goes up, then uh, my taxes go up. And town can then use those taxes to make the town better. That makes everyone's property value goes up. Explain how granting the variance should not be contrary to the public interest. Uh, I think the town honestly needs to be surrounded by people that want to grow the town. I mean, they just um, approved the thing on Elm Street, I think, 150 units. So the town obviously wants to grow, and that's not going to happen if we continue to say no to things. Um, I'm surrounded by Vietnam veterans, small business owners, poli former police chief Dan Donovan, uh, families. So I wouldn't do anything that would contrary their 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 lives. It's just not who I am. Explain that little enforcement. Um, would result in unnecessary hardship. My property, if you go into my driveway from Indigo Hill, is actually a pretty steep hill. So if it was flat, like a normal property, I could just build a patio there. I wouldn't actually need to build the deck in order to use it. So if you go in, my house is here, it goes all the way down. So currently I can't use that. It's just a, it's just a dirt hill. It looks pretty bad. So when I first moved in, that was a staircase that went up to, to nothing essentially. So I ripped that out because it looked bad and it was kind of, it was honestly genuinely pretty dangerous. So if that is gone now, I could then build the deck. I wouldn't have to use my backyard, which is just more driveway. And yeah, so right now that kind of is annoying to the other neighbors because they actually have to go down the stairs, put the grill in the backyard because it's uh, on, the, on the driveway. Because it's at a slant, I have to slide the grill all the way to the middle. It's loud, it's annoying. Um, proposed use is a reasonable one. Same thing like I just said. Explain how the granting the various would do substantial justice. I'm a disabled veteran. I have uh, I had brain cancer. I got medically discharged, so I have like I'm partially paralyzed on the left side of my body. So going up and down the stairs in order to use the grill is kind of annoying. It's a lot worse if I put the deck where it proposed to be. It's only about 10 feet versus going up and down the stairs of the driveway, which is about a 50 feet and change walk. So it just would make it easier for me. My wife, new wife, married two weeks ago. She has uh, type 1 diabetes, so she has arthritis. So going back up and down the stairs is kind of hard for her. 
And a spirit of the ordinance, in my opinion, is basically just be respectful to your neighbors, and that's really what I'm trying to do here. It's inconvenient right now for me to have to go up and down the stairs. It just it's, it makes it harder for everybody. So I just think this isn't really that un unreasonable request because my current neighbor, who is the only one that could actually see it, who I share the driver with, share the driver with, she uh, she doesn't care. There's no one here to abut it. They all wrote some letters that I'm sure you have that support it. Some of them texted me before I got here tonight, said good luck. So I think overall, I uh, I just would appreciate some support from the board because I would like to have them, and I just think it would be a nice improvement to my property. Okay. Um, we'll uh, have you step aside. See if there's anybody else wants to, anybody wants to come up and speak. Does anybody like to sp come up and speak for or against? No. Nope. Come on back. Long walk. Questions for the applicant. So looking at your house, now you, you right now off, you have a front door and then you have a side door. Correct. So off your side door, how big is that deck right now? That side, well, that's kind of a sun porch area. I came with a house, and in front of that is a, an 8x8 deck that I built that was approved uh, about a year ago. And then now I just want to build, but that's just kind of enter the house. I couldn't put a grill there because it's all vinyl, and it would just burn, <laughs> burn the side of it. So I want to build an 8x8 deck to the next to that to actually use that for kind of just basically just hanging out, put the grill there. And again, it, right now it's just kind of an ugly hill. I can't really do much with it because it's mostly dirt. So I'd put the put the deck there. I could try and grow something underneath of it, but it just would hide just the general ugliness of what it currently is. And it's surrounded by six by six ish foot bu bushes. I'm about six five and I can just sort of see over the top of them. So you can't actually see the deck except the neighbor who is directly next to me, SJ. And she doesn't really care. She actually thought it was kind of a nice idea. And currently her stairs, I believe she probably got grandfathered in for this, they would be the exact same distance away from the setback variance that my deck, proposed deck, would be. So it's already currently happening, and it doesn't seem to bother anybody. Okay. And do you have a back door to your house? I do. It's, um, so if you go down, so where my house is, you think you probably have the diagram of it. You go down the driveway and then take a left, and then there's a small door. It's honestly it's only about 5'10", so I have to duck pretty heavily to get inside of it. So now I have to go down the stairs from the kitchen, down the stairs, through the basement, through that door, and then to the middle of the driveway where I have to put the grill. Because, again, it just kind of slides. If I The food will slide off of it if I don't put it in the middle. And so, yeah, that's how I currently get into the house. So there's no door on the fir on the normal work on the first floor to your backyard? No. It's a it's pretty it's about twenty feet in the air. Like if you go down the hill where my kitchen is, where that light would be, mm -hmm. um, where I can, it's twenty feet down. So I couldn't put anything there. And if it was if the driveway was just flat, I could just build a patio there. This wouldn't be necessary at all. But it's just currently not feasible. When I first came down, they um, when I was declined or denied it, uh, one of the women I forget what her name was in the office. She said I should just build a patio there, which would be perfectly fine if it wasn't downhill. But so it's just it's not can't be done with the, just kind of the geometry of my house. Couldn't be done with the, uh, excavation or. I mean, I I think it, my neighbors would have rather have me just build a deck versus bring in a construction crew and raise the ground eight feet in the air. It just would be more expensive for me. I don't personally think it would look as good because then there'd just be this weird blocks, then then a hill, and then the other side of it just flat again. It just doesn't really. It's not. It's kind of not seamless it would look kind of clunky and kind of ruin the aesthetic of it which is what I'm trying to do the opposite of okay other questions for the applicant mr. Brooks I was just looking up because it seems like most of this revolves around your grill and be able to have it close to the house I think it's kind of the American dream sitting out by your house and grilling I 100% I agree. Um, also, a couple of years ago, we lost a house nearby my house to somebody that had a grill on a porch. There's actually a state law that requires that a grill be a certain number of feet from a building or structure. So, Do we I'm, have that amount of feet right here? I, I'm actually looking that up because I, cool. I was just curious about that. And I just, you know, it, it's a safety thing and I'm sure you don't want to visit from the fire department no, for don't. any reason either <laughs> so um not burned down you know so please bear with me but i i no. i just know that was something that happened because i mean this 
the porch was fully engulfed by the time I heard popping and banging and you know obviously the fire department had to respond and the building was a total loss so I, j- I just wanted to caution you on yeah, that it's been sense as well 48 so I don't want to be the first person to lose it yeah so the, the deck you're proposing I'm trying to understand how how far would it encroach upon the setback uh, about 10 feet so basically my driveway down the middle of the driveway it's that's where the property line splits between me and SJ at 120 so the line that goes around the house right now um, is just outside of where the current deck is that enters that sunroom on the side of the house. It's not the front door, but the side door. Yep. And so it would go off the side of that, which would then just make that area actually usable because currently it's just a, a dirt hill. So, and you're built, proposing an 8x8 eight eight deck? 8x8, eight eight, yeah, so 64 square feet. Okay, so I'm, or maybe I didn't get hit catch right. So you're saying that your your current house is probably approximately, not going to hold you to exact numbers, approximately 15 feet is, is probably right on the on the line. Yeah, it's pretty much right on the line. So you would go be going into the setback by 7 feet, 15 yeah, minus 87. Seven. Yeah. That's generally reasonable, reasonable to think that? Yeah, I think that's a perfectly fair assessment. Mr. Burdett. Do you share a driveway with the house on the looking down at the aerial? That is correct. You do share a driveway. Now, how wide is the How do I phrase this question? How much room is there from the edge of the, the right edge of the, your sunroom to the edge of the driveway where it enters your yard? Uh, from the edge of the sunroom to the edge of the driveway, I'd say is probably probably about 15 feet. And again, it's on a it's on a hill, so it's kind of tough to say because it's about 15 feet in the air compared to the driveway. So with that angle. Thank you. Further questions for the applicant? No? Last comments by the applicant. I just would really appreciate the consideration. I wanted to do this. I, I told my wife that I'd build it as a, as a wedding present. And then when I came back to the house and said that it got denied, she was pretty upset. So yeah, I just think it would be a nice thing to do because currently it is kind of inconvenient to go up and down the stairs. None of the neighbors can actually see it besides the person I share the driver with, and she actually thought it was a good idea. The neighbors to my left, Dan Donovan, and the 15 Bumpsville Road below, they can't see the deck, and currently they can see my rear floodlight and me using it, the grill, if I, so it's actually better for them, so that it kind of improves their quality of life, not having to hear me go up and down the stairs. And there used to be a, um, kind of a shed on the property that you see that square that is on the outside of the the variance line and that one when I actually ripped that down because it was ugly metal it made a bunch of noises everyone actually kind of cheered as I did that so I think my my spirit of the ordinance of trying to improve the neighborhood is there this isn't a selfish act in any way I do have one more question um, so looking this up it says 10 feet from yeah, a structure it would be more than 10 feet and that includes this there wouldn't be any overhangs or no, there's nothing there it's just free space okay i I thought it was more than 10 feet that's yeah. why i was curious on this and had to look no. that up just a safety concern yeah safety's priority i work in youth sports so it's kind of one of the biggest things all day make sure everyone's safe all right any other questions you're all set are you all set i'm all set yes thank sure. you very much for your time close the public hearing have a seat Regional impact. <laughs> Anyone see any regional impact? I'd, I'll make a motion that this does not have regional impact. If I get to read the whole thing, I'm you just, just to say I move a variance request does not does not have potential for regional impact. Correct. Second. Miles Adams. And a second by Mr. Hilton. Discussion on it. So the motion is that the variance request by Miles Adams is does not have regional impact. All those in favor, raise your right hand. Five zero. Discussion. Mr. Fredet. I'm not very good at math, I'll admit it. I don't understand how an eight foot deck with a grill on it is ten feet away from a building. Can somebody if you do the trigonometry and it has an existing eight foot deck and you go out an, another eight feet, that would be sixteen feet. 
from the total width, but it'd be eight feet from the corner. But if you take tri triangular, if you put the corner of the grill in the outside corner of Got the it. deck, you would be potentially be you would be Got ten it. feet away. Hypotenuse of the triangle. Per deck. Uh, again, I would say there is a little bit more of a hardship with this application than the last application because of the topography of the lot, but I think ultimately There have been other options voiced by city staff, and I can see where maybe in the longer run those options both satisfy the ordinance and meet the criteria. Mr. Brooks. Well, not ideal. It looks like there's room to build towards the front as well that would not encroach the setback. Uh, obviously, there are some shrubs there and stuff that would be in the way of it, but, you know, to simply build towards the front of the building, you could essentially get the same deck without encroaching. So um, I'm having a hard time seeing the hardship again with this one. Sorry about that. Other discussion? Comments? The Hilton wants to. With the hardship, I was thinking as far as the um, person, the uh, applicant, being, not being able to, or having medical issues, and also his wife having medical issues that. Um, I could. I remember doing the pool application, and uh, but you know we we did have we did um, give a variance because of medical issues, and I don't know if that is part of the hardship, and um, part of the hardship also on this the challenge on this property with the driveway dropping down so much. It um, it could be it would be an issue building a patio out there because then they're going to have to go down the stairs and um, if stairs are an issue for the family then that would be a that could be considered a hardship in my opinion. Yep. So I did look into the the, the handicap hardship, which is actually referenced in table 5a1 uh, as note 14 um, but it unfortunately it only specifically refers to basically ramps or similar structures to allow persons or persons with recognizable physical disability to reside in the premise and maybe installed within required setbacks provided that all the following criteria are met so it really only addresses ramps or how to get in and out of the building and not adding on to the structure i did look because i had the same curiosity that you did mr product I also think, and I'm not sure how in my mind yet, but I think the concept of having that shared driveway over there adds a, a level of complexity for me for granting this. In light of the fact that by the applicant's testimony there, the abutter already has tight on her side as well and she has a structure in her side of the setback so you're starting to really fill a tight space for access purposes look at the criteria we always do will diminish surrounding properties you could probably argue either way. 
when, once you start filling in setbacks, it could affect pro certain properties. Um, but it is for kind of far back in the property. The variance is not contrary to public interest. I don't think it has any effect on changing the character of the neighborhood. Um, substantial justice done it gives the applicant. The applicant is no really diminished to the general public, except maybe the um, surround the, the neighbor the neighboring property access. But as long as they didn't build it into the driveway, they'd have no. I would say no greater, no less, no less access. So it would be fair there. Uh, it's in the spirit of the ordinance, it, and this is we discussed this a little bit before. Now you're getting the, the closeness. If you have one property coming in on one side and one coming in the other, now you're changing the look of the the proper, the surrounding neighborhood by having all these structures in there. But again, we all get to the our famous criteria number number three, which we call the hardship criteria. We say, is there anything unique to the property? Um, there is some. There is the slant that makes it difficult to negotiate the property Sh should that does that create a hardship in applying such that they should be able to go into the side setback with a deck with the idea that they would do that because they can't build a patio there so the second tier of the hardship criteria is it is it a reasonable request this is where mr brooks went into and where my, some of my questions to the applicant got into looking for is there a rear door is there another place that you could put the deck and accomplish the same task. There's no back door in the house, so you can't build a deck off the back of the house to do that. So that, that, did, that didn't help the applicant. Though he could build it off his, I guess, a patio off his, his um, cellar stairs, not what he wants to do, but he could build a patio off the cellar stairs. A patio may or may not be applicable. It's kind of hard, but it'd be definitely difficult. There is room to put a, a additional decking along the side of the house in front of the existing decking which would still get that the 10 feet that's required by the fire code putting a deck off the front of the house kind of wouldn't look really right you could, I mean you probably would go into the front side setback but I think there is you still could put like Mr. Brooks was pointing out a, a, an addition toward the front of the street for the deck so reasonableness is it, is it absolutely necessary is it the only option no For the discussion. Mr. Hilton. The applicant had, he wanted to say something about moving, putting something out to the front of the house. Is it possible to hear something on that? Is it possible to, to yep, thanks. Is it possible to hear from him on that? Because he was, he was wanting to say. The board wants to open the public, the, the, the public hearing again, then we can, so. We'd have to make a motion to it to open a public hearing again, and the board would have to agree. To it. We could just do a, a hand vote, but the board would have to agree to open a public hearing again. Okay. Um, yeah, so I'd make the motion to. So, he's, he's, so what's board thoughts on that? I'll second it. Okay. All those in favor of reopen the public hearing. One four. Thank you, Mr. Helm. Uh, so I could I couldn't build the deck in front of the current deck because I don't have a ton of yard and there's already a walkway there and then I would have to to make this size deck I would have to remove a bunch of those bushes anyway so that's again that just kind of takes away from some of the kind of the aesthetic of the property if I had to remove bushes which again is kind of annoying and then if I had to build it up to get to the level of the current deck that's just again that's just a lot of work that would then kind of just impede even further for worried about setting into the driveway. That actually adds more to that. So then it, I have to take out a patio. I have to take out a walkway that I just put in. It's just, it, I don't have a ton of front yard, so I was going to put it there. That takes up 64 square feet of a yard that I don't really have to begin with. So it just, I think aesthetically it would look bad. It then makes it harder or worse on my property to have it there. And then I now have to walk through it versus just kind of having it on the side makes it a little bit more of a, a, a leisure area versus now it's just in a traffic pattern, which kind of defeats the purpose of it. Okay. Any questions for the applicant on that? Mr. Brooks? If you build the deck off to the side towards the driveway, it's going to be at the same level as the existing one, correct? That's correct, yes. So it's going to be built up off the ground anyway. Exactly. If we built it towards the front, it would 
But yeah, there's already there's a walkway there, so I'd have to get rid of that, and which then makes that thing completely useless. I'd have to remove some of those bushes, which then again you don't want to rip up nature. I think it would look worse if it was there. And yeah. overall, it's just it, if you I mean you guys want to come over and look at the property, you would understand it doesn't make any sense to put it there. It would look bad. It makes it it makes it less practical, and again, it takes up some of the little bit of yard that I have. I'll be honest. I drive by every property I consider it one of these boards because sometimes seeing it in person yeah, has I a lot of impact so great. um <coughs> you know I, I do take the opportunity to do that i did drive by it today um just my thought is you know we had a gentleman here earlier tonight that has a deck that or porch that wraps around the front of the building it's not an unusual thing to do so yeah, but his topography was different he didn't have the dip it makes that more it makes it more difficult for me because of how my property is shaped, he did not have that difference. So they're similar, but not. Okay. Any other questions for the applicant? Okay. All set. All right. I appreciate you letting me open yep. up to explain that. Okay. I'm going to close the public hearing again. Discussion by the board. Mr. Fredette. Again, I'll say I'd love to be in a position that, that I think I need to grant this. Looking at the aerial photo, there are tons of lots right in this area that are exactly the same size i just i don't think as much as i wish i could reason through it i don't think there's a way that this meets the hardship criteria to the bar necessary to grant this okay. other comments discussion okay chair will entertain a motion For that. After review of the application, the file, and all of the information presented to the board, I feel that the hardship criteria has not been satisfied, and I move that the request of Miles Adams for a variance from Table 5.A.1 to allow the construction of a deck located within the 15-foot side setback on a property located at 118 Hill Indigo Hill Road be denied. The motion to a second. Second by Mr. Brooks. Discussion on the motion. Okay, the motion is to deny the variance. All those in favor of the motion, raise your right hand. All those opposed? Motion variance is not de is denied. Thank you. Any other new business come before the board? Uh, Mrs. Crosley. No new business. No new business. <laughs> I'll let you think on that a second. Any from the board? No new business. Mr. Hilton. Oh, Mr. Mo Mo Hilton would like to make a motion to adjourn. Do a second? Second by Mr. Brooks. All those in favor, raise your right hand. We are adjourned.